Hello and welcome to Data Engineering and Infrastructure Community. Today we are going to discuss Amundsen, which is a data discovery and metadata engine. So I I, I will try to uh, first start with the basics that what is Amundsen, yeah, yeah, yeah. and then we will go to the docs. Along with that, I will go to the demo. Like whatever the docs is saying, we will try to do that way. That way, mm -hmm. what will happen is we will realize how well. The doc is being formed, and mm -hmm. uh, are we can we go through that and simply build this ecosystem or not? Okay. Then we will throw on go on discussion, and then I will try to explain my experience in last month working with Amundsen, and okay. then we can all discuss on that thing. But as you suggested, we will go and first see how things are working. Is it actually makes sense or not? And how easy it is to do. Like I am still yeah. insisting on easy because that yeah. that is where I realize things are okay. a bit hard. Okay, good. So now it's four. We have a pretty tight agenda, so I will start, and then slowly, we, if others join during the Q and A session, we can catch up. So welcome all. Thank you for presenting. Uh, be here. I'm Abhishek, also known as AVC, and I will today. I will kick start with Amundsen, the data cataloging system, or data governance, data discovery, metadata management. There are many name to this kind of ecosystem. So let's directly jump in to my screen and see what how it's happening. Let me know if you can see the screen, please. Can you all see my screen? Yeah. So Amundsen, what is it? Technically, it is it is a data discovery and metadata engine for improving the productivity of data analysts, data scientists, and many things are written there. So, I I won't read through this, but I will just try to say what exactly I understood when I am working on Amundsen is it's a search engine of data. Um, so data can be tables. It can so technically it is tables like in any way you trans. Transform your data to table. That's where Amundsen can show you. Nowadays, uh, these are huge. The numbers can go to thousands, and that's where you need a systems like that, where you can actually search for data, and then go inside that and try to understand what is it, what what is the schema look like, what kind of information it has, how it's being formed, who is the owner, can I go to the owner, who is Frequently using this data, so that I can discuss with that particular developer or user and try to understand is that data is really useful for me or not. So, because of this massive boom in the data and data science, data analytics you, uh, platform, this is a beautiful tool. Like this is really helpful and useful, and that's where Amundsen works. In general, Amundsen has. Multiple modules, so but I will only talk about some of them which are very important, and I, I have worked on them, of course. Amundsen Frontend Library, which you are seeing, it is for entirely flags based, and it is a Amundsen service. And when we will work through it, we will understand like how it works and what kind of things you can do with this. Search library is back based on Elasticsearch, but it is like the search, like whatever you are writing. It goes through the principle of Elasticsearch engine and present you all the information. Metadata is can be two. It can be based on Neo4j, which is actually default provided option, or you can use Apache Atlas. If I'm not wrong, there is a work going on to use uh, MySQL as well for metadata library. Uh, and Apache Atlas is another one which I I tried once when I started working here. Then then I moved to Neo4j. Data Builder is actually the library which publish data or your information to this Amundsen ecosystem, and it has connection. Like you can imagine, it is like a producer, and Amundsen front end metadata library is a consumer. So, from Data Builder, you produce this, and the UI consume them and somehow uh, make it uh, in a presentable way, which finally in the UI we see. Okay. So this is the basics on the Amundsen side. Uh, just give me a minute. Okay, sorry. Oh, I didn't see so many numbers. Okay, so uh, 
this is what uh, currently uh, uh, we were in hr so, so these are the four libraries currently we are interested on there are many we will go through it in the right side of the screen as you are seeing it is uh, our by charm where i just did check out the entire amazon i will tell why i will show you the reason why and in the back on the scene we will just uh, directly jump to the quick start model this is what the quick start so you go to amazon and just go to the quick start why because we really want to see how easy it is to set up like is it easy it is complicated that we all will decide but let's directly jump in everything is dockerized that's easy it says do the git clone so you can see here it is i did the git clone that's all i did nothing else then it says for neo 4j backend just do this docker compose or else do atlas so the, our docker is docker amazon yaml dot up let's open it like what is it we are trying uh, so it is being asked like open this so it has neo 4j as the component as we discussed and you see it has bolt as 76SR core and 74714 is the new 4 j browser layer. Then we have Elasticsearch. It has recently upgraded to 7.13.3. Before that, it only supported till Elasticsearch 6 because technically you don't need much, but now it has upgraded. So it's actually a good thing. Then we have an internal among some search library which starts. On 5000, this is actually our UI. When we will do localhost 5000, that's where the Amazon is hosted. The metadata library, which is for uh, storing the information in every possible way in a metadata abstraction on top of Neo4j, this is what the metadata library is all about. And you can see we are setting the Neo4j bolt to that. So there is a connection between those two. And another com component is front end. This is the entire UI and it depends on metadata and search. So those two are required. You just can't work without them. So it is very clear here and that's it. There's nothing else here. With that, what we just need to do is docker compose minus F docker amansum let's go so what they told us we just did here nothing so let us wait it is running it it, it will run at, at, at least for end user actually four uh, three components one is new forger one is elastic search and one is uh, the front end the main like if you go through the logs there are many services it try to trigger but new forger is this one is already started 3.5.26. Amundsen is hosted on 5000 and front end is here. Okay. Elasticsearch should be somewhere here. If you search, it should be there. It will, it will definitely be there. But we can directly go from the UI and see what happens. So I go here. This is and I say 5000. Open. So, okay. It's open. So the UI is here, it is empty. You can imagine that there won't be anything to see much, but it should have one more component, new for uh, So in the Amazon UI opens on localhost 5000 and this UI, our browser UI on new 4 g opens on 7.7. You can see everything is empty. You can try test or something. There is nothing to show. And you do any event, you will get enough log. The beautiful thing about Amundsen is you get quite a lot of log to go through and understand what is happening. Now, in Neo4j, uh, you can actually go and debug and try to find out some of the, uh, if it has some information or not. Like, is it, it should not be a case <coughs> that your Neo4j has information, but maybe your Amundsen is not shown. So, to validate that hypothesis, we do that. Return end. So this should usually give me something if it it has. But you see there is no record, nothing. So we are good that there is no other information. Meanwhile, I okay. So now we know Amansum has no information. So we need to 
it uh, update some of the information inside it. How will it be do it? So we will again go back to our favorite uh, docs, and inside doc, uh, they say you go to something called in a separate terminal window. Go to data builder. Data builder in the right side. If you see, this is the thing. You go to data builder, and then you do sample loader. Blah 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 blah. So we will do that. We will do all the step. But before we do all these things, let's let's try to understand what is data builder. Like we won't go on too many things, but it it works around your metadata. And as I said, it is a producer. It collects from your system, reads all the metadata. Uh, you can say decorate it, articulate it in the way of system, and then it publishes. That is what this particular data builder does. And the most important file is all of them in data builder. There is nothing you can miss. It is a very important uh, builder file. But uh, here it is saying directly go and run the sample data builder. So if I go to this example script um, sample data builder, it has many things, a lot. So my recommendation would be. Since it has many function, let's try to break that down and try to write our own function to it, so that at least we understand what is it. Like, uh, do I need to write the entire thing, or I can simply do some basic things on it? Before that, we will run the scripts. So what we will do is, we will, as said, we will go to a new browser or console or web tester. Okay, I'm in data builder. And what I will do is I will say Python three create a virtual machine. I did. Uh, if you can't see me, please let me know because um, I, I I hope you all can see me. So I can do that. Can you have skip pre-install requirement upgrade? I already did it, so I skip that part. I install the requirement.txt. It is already installed. Most of them is in my system, and then I build the set of file. Python three. So, okay, I will pause here. I won't run the next line. So uh, we know in our information there is nothing. Literally everything is clean. Our admin center is empty. So to solve that, we will do the like we have this sample data loader in script. We will open our some file so that. We create our own file, so we can create a file name as a Python file, which will be infra community. It can be any name. Uh, by the way, the application name is some. I did it. I will move a bit faster so that uh, we have some time to discuss. Very basic thing I will first do is to remove all uh, unnecessary problem is I will copy all the class data. Or the script data, which is not in the problem here. So I just did copy paste it. So what I copy paste is import functions, some information on the Neo four J endpoint, our Elasticsearch port endpoint, and that's it. These are all you, know, you can say in the Docker environment basic. So I just copy paste it. Then I am interested on I believe in the main component. So. Now I will go to the main function and I will try to see what this particular script is doing. This script is run something called run table column job, which is on top of the some some file called sample table dot csv and a file called sample column dot csv. Before we go there, let's jump to this function and see what it is doing. It is getting some path, these two path and column name, which is it is. Dumping into this particular key value dictionary, and rest everything is kind of a template. If you see, it is kind of a template. So, it means our point of interest is these two files. Again, going back down to understand what was the file. The file was sample table dot csv. It should be somewhere here. My sample table dot csv. This is the file, and sample column dot csv. Sample call dot csv. So, in sample table of CSV, we have these things: database, cluster, schema, name, description, tags, is view, 
description itself. So we know these are some uh, file it is looking for. These are some content it is looking for. So I will go blindly and I will create a file called infra dot no infra table dot csv and just copy paste the header. Okay, good. And I will name myself. So when it comes to the database. It can be delta actually, hive, delta, all of all those things you can actually build it. Uh, since nowadays we are talking about delta, and I know they put a uh, fanciness on delta here, so let's add delta my database name. Okay. Now, when it comes to the cluster, uh, it has you know, like we can give any name. So for our case, let's say uh, we are going to run on um, what is the name? Infra. Infra is our cluster name. Give it infra as a cluster name. Then the next term is schema. The schema can be uh, example and the database name. And then we have next is name. What is the name of the particular table we are given? So to make it unique, I actually name it unique. Just to when we search, just to be sure that we have our table inside it. Inside description, it's a string. So we will say something blah 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 okay. tags tags is the unique way uh, in among them where you can actually put category like any tag in category so in our case we can have tags like uh, community yes these are the two com i just put is it a view no it is not a view it's a table and what kind of source is it so currently i'm doing it manually so I copy pasted this again and I just created hive as another one in the same cluster infra in the same uh, exam no my, my this can be hive uh, hive exam okay my table name will be hive table it can be everything is ASAS community test can remain but I can put one more tag here hive and again I can just say yeah it is not false and another thing I will give it is here true so that we have a view as well here. And everything else is UNK view. And I am view. I am view. Community test and it is as well manual. I, I can even remove this, it doesn't matter. So if you do this, that is as well fine. Nothing will happen. It is fine. So Taking a pause here, I created a table exactly same like a sample table.csv and I gave my info like my database is a delta. I have two delta database, one is a table, another is a view, and then I have a, another hive databases which has a name hive example and it has a hive table. And just give something better this is a hive table and this is something called and delta. And I put a tag and I say, okay, this is uh, not this is not a view, so this is a false info, and this is not. That's the first file got created. Now I go back to this example and try to see what they're doing again. Then there is something called sample column. So it created a column, and if you see, if you carefully notice in the column, they define a column. What kind of column you're creating inside that table? And here you just say for the same table you created three column like. If you carefully notice the string hive in the same order, there's a sorting order. The hive, hive is the database name for them. We have our hive and delta as well. We have cluster name is bold for us. Our cluster name was infra. So we can have infra here and all these things have a schema. So it means more or less similar order fashion. We need to create one more column. So we will do the almost same thing. We will just go here, copy the column and create a file infra call.csv paste it and um, we will create a column first id uh, inside id um, i believe i will say id for table uh, id for delta table okay and then we have column type column type is 
uh, how do I get it? Yeah, string. So I have minus here integer. So I will get int. Sorting order should be passed by them. My database cluster and schema name is you can copy this from here. Uh, from where? Uh, sorry, this should be the right one. Database cluster schema name. This two and the table name. I think this four I can copy. Let me see. One. The database is uh, delta in call the cluster schema is example and the table name is unique and badges badges is actually which tells it it is a primary key it's a foreign key it is what kind of key so those kind of uh, flagging or reference integrity you can define by badges so i will put it here pk so that is a primary key like you can see here pk fk p i i i forgot it what is used but it, it is as well one in a case okay so i just put a pk here same this I can create more columns I can create a name and I can create address it should be uh, name for name same in the same table ID it can be address and both should be string This can be order can be changed like this. This uh, this can be FK like how we sort key. Yeah? They copy from here. Yeah, this two. I can do this here. I can copy paste this here, and this can be nothing else. Okay, that's it. I won't add anything beyond it. Hope that everything will work for this now. Okay, so this is the two files I created based on the sample table they did, it. and what they did is they just copy this file and like this one friends i as well copy this file in our infra community create here and i know i don't have implementation of this particular column so i will go here i will come and i will shamelessly copy this there we go and copy paste done it's done i would say no we, we are we are far from done because here we need to be careful that it just Publish some job here, nothing else. So where is the elastic search component? Where is other things? So it is all here. So those are all function. But again, uh, these three, these thing what you are seeing, like create. Yes, <laughs> uh, yes publisher sample job, and these three, these are all actually a template. Template means in more, more or less everywhere you will see, but in a different different fashion. So for now, just to save our time, I, I won't do much. I will just create a job out of it. So right now, this is one. These three I will copy. And in my in our file infra structure, I will just copy this. Sorry. I will copy this. I know my this file, I, this function is missing, so I will copy my this one. This function is actually, if you go through the example later, it is completely a template. You can actually make it refactor it and use it in multiple files by changing the passing values and these parameters. And, and that's it. All right. Okay. Okay. So, what I did, I just created a sample example of a table and a sample column. And I created, I just copy pasted the mostly the mocked element or I will set a template over here. Now, technically, if I run this final thing, I should able to see something. So let's see. So I have created a build environment as you remember, friends. So I can just go there and I can say Python 3, sample scripts, and my file name is infra community. And I just say same to go run. It is running okay. It did something. something. Let's see, it actually it is printing something or not. So, I will go back to our thing and I will try to see what is happening. Okay, we have some information we have delta, recommender, tag, something. So, what is our file name here? I have three more. Delta has this delta test table, so I forgot the name. And I get inside this. So, see, 
we have information on this table. Okay, so we got some information. We will jump back, jump to all these things. I'm just trying to show that that is how you add table, but this is not. This is not the only way you do this. I'm just trying to show you that when you start with the example, this is the minimal you can do and see what is happening, how it is working. So this is all set. Like it means you can here search, you know, test tables. You see this kind of table. You can go to test tables and try to find out what is there. Column, column. All, all are good. Like till the time it is working, everything is good. Okay. Okay. Hmm. This is the first part of when we say how uh, you inject input inside Amazon. That, that is how we do that. When you manually do it, I'm again manually because there is a way you won't do so much work. It is all automated. If you connect to that engine and then you write a small code which will read automatically all this information, you cannot do that. But to kick start it, this is the first thing you do. Now, this is an example. So everything what got created here is an example. So I want to actually run the sample data loader here because it has a lot of information. But before I do that, I need to delete all this junk what I just did. So you remember uh, in Neo4j last time we said uh, there should be something now. So let's see, we get some information here now. So we created so many things. So I said, okay, give me all the tables you have. See what I see. Okay, I have these tables. So this is how you are aware that your Neo4j has all the information, and that's why you are seeing. So if you connect on the Neo4j side, if you work, uh, I didn't work much, but for this I have some experience. All the meta information are, are actually inside Neo4j, and that's being written by uh, that's being read by I mean. And that is what you are seeing here. But now it's come to the point that I want to delete it. It's simple. You won't delete anything from Amazon, but you will delete everything from Neo4j and Elasticsearch. Both. What do I mean is, if you go here, match, I'm deleting, and I said detach and delete everything. And run. It deleted nodes, relationship, everything. And if you clean, it is all gone. Moreover, you need to actually do curl on Elasticsearch because you, if you try to search here, I think you will see something. Yeah, see, you're seeing it. But if you click, nothing is there. It's deleted, but the search index are already there. So that's why you need to delete this search as well. And then everything should be clean delete. So technically now nothing should be here. Yeah, nothing is there. So now you see everything is deleted. So when you create it, you write this file and it will imp uh, indirectly update two element, Neo4j and Elasticsearch. And when you delete it, you need to remember the both should be deleted. Then only your entire ecosystem will be clean. Now we deleted it and now we have a time. Uh, you know, we have an opportunity to you now invoke this entire thing on the sample data, which by the way, the example told us to do, which I didn't follow. So now let's see. I just go and copy paste this final piece. Run. This file has a huge width of information. It updates files, metadata, table information, snippets, not file. So all the possible uh, elements of Amazon examples are available in this particular. So I got many, so I can go to this. The schema table has one of the most robust table and see so many information here. Let's discuss some of the interesting examples. First, you see this AFI? Uh, in my case as well, our Amazon update everything directly from WordPress. So we pass the DAG ID directly. So that if a user comes and search this table, they know what was the source of generation, how that pipeline created, what got generated. So that's why this information is there. You can flag your GitHub information here directly. Preview you will do back to that later. Description, as you know, we can update. This owners, 
is a two way to doing it either naturally in this exam in our case of example it does everything on the manual side but actually from elasticsearch meta and bin log it can read your own content frequent information is as well based on how frequently your table creation or getting generated in my case i never managed to do it automatically so i run a script based on our uh, running example and we add manually but uh, as per the community there is a way to do it and i'm pretty sure many did it so you can use the frequent user in that sense and here you have static information you can actually add lots of static information if you want to be sure on what is going on what kind of information some more headers and relations you can want to put it you can put it that's the another element of uh, inside i mean some metadata you can add and preview is actually integrating a snapshot of your uh, table so here what you are seeing column 1 column 2 if i would have my preview on and i would have connected that to a particular dashboard like one of the dashboard i am using is superset so i connected that uh, so i connected amundsen to superset and if you click on preview you will just create a new window so you have a small preview of how that tables look like that is very helpful if a user access maybe not possible or possible or he is on she is not sure at least for the preview with the actual data it is easier to understand then we have this kind of information if you click on the column level information you see you get stats again it's a programmatical way of updating the stats like uh, and like in the parquet we have the stats history like you can configure that but for my side i sometimes update a uh, back end engine which update the stats based on columns so that i won't say that is the only way but that is another way but these are useful like some columns for data analysis was so useful that if you put stats you get all information in this ui so they will search they will directly go to the ui they will understand everything and then they will decide okay is it a point of interest for them maybe not maybe yes so that's where the stats come these are most of the information at least in this particular ui and same goes to any kind of badging and you can see the json badges you can put almost all possible connectors can be added and if you have something custom you can actually add the code is nicely written we have added one integration for our internal folk and it worked it is it is pretty good in that sense this is the part where uh, as a default setup i mean some gives you like where you are seeing all these things but there can be a question where is the lineage uh, like is there a way to see lineage and all those information the good news is yes there is uh, you can actually run lineage on them but you need to build the image in a bit different way i will show you how uh, in the sense of lineage like if you want to really add lineage here you will see the file we already have sample lineage added so in a column lineage you give the source and the column for a particular table so it means stay in column 1 is a source and column the test table 2 uh, column 1 has lineage there's a lineage pattern in there so there are two kind of lineage column lineage table lineage you can add them but you are not seeing that in ui because you need to activate them so those are in beta if i'm not i think the development is still going on but you can already try that. uh how you do that is a bit programmatic uh that's where i would say some of the things which may bit get bit harder because you know you definitely need developers to do this kind of thing so you go to static okay so one of them is static page so this uh, you need to rebuild your uh, setup ui and then you change you change the file actually static config yeah config the file okay so here you have you get many uh, uh deactivated thing which you can get uh, you can activate and try so like column lineage you need to put this true true 
we need to put table lineage to 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 so it has many such kind of lineage and upcoming features and you need to activate build the docker image and trigger it again you need not to reload the data because if you already punch it it will automatically work and i will prove that i will try to prove that to you because before this uh, as i remember it didn't work properly so let me see if it works or not so i have uh, killed the uh, image and i will say i will again try to show this properly okay i have again killed it so technically now nothing should work my system should go down let me see yes it is down so i just created a new yaml file and i did let it run here abc yaml uh, sorry docker docker compose and what is it everything is same except in the front end you see i have created i have built the docker and i tagged them something called lineage image so i just just put everything on true i generated image and i'm using that that's all i change everything else is remain same so Okay, so technically now we are expecting that our UI should have more functionality, better functionality, which we call, and you can see lineage. Again, the lineage is still evolving. I won't say that the currently the lineage is the best way of representing data, but it is good. It is way better than nothing right so we i tried lineage in some of the application but i think it kind of work because um, inside of lineage you need to everything is programmable so like in our last discussion i think this is the this came okay let me see okay my bolt is again okay good so again as last time happened my uh, system is again uh, complaining with the lineage pattern of uh, i think new 4j yeah it is a new 4j issue it is uh, it is something to do with my system i, I can ensure you it is nothing to do with uh, amundsen uh, in my uh, it is keep on flashing back so that you can ignore that part i couldn't show you unfortunately but if it works out somehow in our during our discussion i will just show you like how it shows the lineage example as well remote interface available so it just told me it is available just give me a moment yes good it came up so now let me see so i will again go to the test table and see how the ui now looks like okay many things <laughs> so you are seeing here downstream so in the table if you go to the downstream you see the downstream from this table table view and testable tools have created that's one of the table tools in downstream then we have column level downstream here so in the test view column 1 is column level downstream so it is all programmable so you actually wrote them and tell them that this is what how i'm generating it which eventually based on your system you can automate then you have reports here where you can go to advanced profile and you can actually link it to any this is a mock ui as you can imagine but you can link it to more more reporting and dashboard medium so you can actually what we are trying right now is we actually connect our super cert uh basic dashboard for each table where we do some basic science on the data we directly link from here to superset so all those things become pretty easy or handy for analysis to go and click and go or data scientist to see what is happening lineage is better it's nothing but actually redirection of url right now there is nothing but if you have a lineage um, happening on any other system in atna uh, i believe last time we discussed so you can just click on that you will directly redirect to that lineage but as you can see eventually the ui is uh, becoming self uh, sufficient to show all lineage kind of principle all kind of information so this is how with the different different docker uh, 
customization I'll, the customization of SM column is still same there is nothing not much work you just change this flag to true build the docker done that's all you will do there is nothing not too much heavy work you need to do to make it happen but you it it can't be just anyone can go and double click and run uh, an example i won't say that it is that easy it is definitely far from that easy you need some of the work as you realize we have so many components if one of them doesn't work you will get confused what happened why it is not running that's the fundamental on how to work and demoing on the mmsm side now the next question which when i started a cleanup okay this is what all manual i wrote them the csv then i'm telling go and do it so it is doing it how can i automate it i don't want to do so much work obviously that's that is what you are not do you should not do so here we have different kind of examples so that's a manual thing in a sample data loader but you can use uh, mysql rule where your inputs are different you actually don't manually write them this is all template what you are seeing but here in the end you actually send the table information and this engine will take all information on what is it your mysql id and password then uh, this particular system will eventually figure it out that how to connect read the table information and then so for sample it is a lot of work but if it's not sample like hive db2 delta iceberg all even dream your blue all of them are automated so if you open the for code and see 160 line to just work no all of them are actually template you actually need to change this connection string rest everything is copy paste you can actually make it abstract and use it uh, in a in general sense and that's it you will run everything will eventually happen so that is the reason if you integrate that to your airflow dac this is like one of the task in the end which reads your mysql uh, uh, connection string reads which table you want to update and boom that's all it will update you need not to take care anything if you configure with once same thing is hive so for our use case um, we have many many hive tables coming up so you can see we can go with the lambda so whenever the new uh, parquet file comes in our loop or in a particular location what we do is we trigger the lambda that lambda hits the airflow with a particular path that parquet is converted to you can say hive meta store so like we generate hive meta store on top of the parquet or trainer table and then the final task goes to mmsm for end user we just say you go to mmsm search for data what you are interested in and from mmsm all these links are provided like where is agreement where is the airflow if you want to go directly on the super server go and click on the super server so all this can be integrated in a way in a single ecosystem where you search the data then you preview the data then you understand want to know little bit more about the data then you have the stacks here which again you need to programmatically do if you have some more intelligent stacks you want to do which usually happens based on business and then finally uh, once that stack is updated then user can decide that what they want to do they want to go to super server they want to run some machine learning application it depends but these are the connected components first thing now this is on the demo side i believe uh, i should now pause and open for discussion then we will come up with more questions and answer and then we'll figure it out does that make sense yeah okay questions i think with questions now we will get to more answers and what kind of doubts that and how i am implementing uh, we can go in that way so uh, should we start the question round how difficult is it to connect to airflow it's very easy so in airflow it's a task right so you just use this particular docker image of builder so you create a docker image out of this particular builder uh, builder package this one and uh, inside the builder if your mmsm is already hosted inside the builder package you just integrate it actually here in dags they give some dags example as well so like you see like 
and this is the DAO of currency is the same thing they provided here and all this information you uh, actually package in a library and reuse them so it's actually not difficult it's the same thing it is just that you need to create this library once and use it as a task on a docker in docker so i, I in my dag all these things are clean everything is dockerized it just passed the variable and all this internally So it will automatically <coughs> pick up the all the variables, right? Yes. Means uh, you need to provide. So at least as a input parameter, you need to provide which particular table or file you are talking about, and then it will automatically uh, pick out everything. Great. Thank you. Abhishek, I have a question here. Uh, first of all, thank you for uh, evangelizing this. Uh, a quick question is, uh, I would like to know a data lineage. How, let's say I have a hive and multiple tables uh, within hive. Let's say hundreds of tables are there. How can we create a auto lineage out of this? Is there any way or feature? As of now, no. It depends on the what is the auto uh, lineage library you are using. If you are using a particular lineage model, you just need to programmatically uh, create a pattern to it. If you ask me, is it the lineage the perfect way of representation in Amundsen, I will say no. The work is going on, they are making a graph base on the lineage, lineage pattern. But uh, as of now, if you want to represent lineage in Amundsen, it is a bit of work. And maybe everybody doesn't appreciate the way the lineage is being represented. Uh, like a lot of feedback from my teammate came up with more like why it is not a DAG, why it's not a graph way of representing. You have new forger, then why uh, the same graph is not shown here? So something like that. So I would say lineage is still evolving. It is more of a method of search. Lineage will come next if I'm not wrong. Uh, Abhishek, I have a question. Uh, have you ever uh, tried uh, data hub? So that's a uh, pool based system, right? And this is a pool based system. So, uh, what would be uh, preferred and why it would be? So, what will be the advantage in both of the systems? Good question. Okay, I have used Colibra, I have used uh, this, I have used uh, Data Hub, and actually, Data Hub, I'm actively, actively trying in another project as well. So, mm, I won't uh, say bad and good in that sense, but I would say data hub conceptually is a bit different than Amazon. Data hub is purely, uh, uh, if I'm not wrong, in a queue fashion. In the linear side, uh, I personally like data hub, but in the search side, I like Amazon. Now, when it comes to setup, uh, None of them were easy because both of them are tech heavy. Like both of them needs bit of work to install. It is not a single click install. So I can't judge in that point. And both of them are new. They are all evolving. So it is too early to actually come to a conclusion that this is good or bad. I would still say it is on the preference side that what you like on at least on the Vizvik side from now. And uh, in case uh, lineage is still important, I think in, in next upcoming meetings, uh, I will try to present data hub as well. And then maybe we will have a better case to actually justify uh, which one is preferred in what kind of cases. What uh, have you used uh, data hub with On this side, so if you go to the data hub site, you can see the demo. It's basically an uh, Acryl data platform that they are. Uh, so, I mean, yeah, for me, it is a more, as you say, all a prototyping way of data hub. So, I'm currently can't say which one is better. Like, it, it is hard for me. I've used uh, both of them. Uh, I think find a time to use any of them. Uh, but uh, the data hub. 
visualization i really like it so way it is fun even the image and everything uh, it is fun i really like it maybe because they have a team which is developing a particular product and uh, some of the parts that is open to that may be the case and i must say most probably would be uh, guys like us from the engineering team who was just come up with the pieces ui uh, to do to the business. so that it is functional it is more functional than uh, visually attractive good point actually uh, if you see like amazon sum is from uh, i think uh, both started from left and now the company is backed by stema and uh, yeah you're right like at, at least in the linear side i like in data hub but uh, yeah as as i say for the search i still like amazon but yeah it, it is more like uh, uh, ui like or i was a preference but yeah for now there is not a very solid argument on saying no this is the reason this is the best not this uh, so yeah at least for now but in future i hope we will have a no this means it is not required we should have one it can have two and there is a big space for this other questions okay so if we don't have any other question uh, then uh, i would like to close the meeting but before that i will give a chance like uh, in case if any other questions we uh, still come we can still jump up to the community to uh, in our channel and we can ask there as well but for now if there is no other question then should uh, then i will just count till 3 and then i will close the meeting is it all right